Hey, good morning, guys. You know, I had an opportunity, Abe and I did yesterday, to spend some time with Alan at this uh, birthday party where they had this uh, ninja warrior type thing set up. And I, I watched Alan uh, Barracio. He climbed a rope, man. It was like tied to the ceiling. He climbed it up. Man, he was like a spider going up there. It was amazing. He did the warped wall. So amazing. He's already getting in shape. Give him another hand. So proud of him. And also, I, I wanted to have Guinea Anderson come up here real quick. Y'all know Guinea from Harvest now, he and Lisa. He uh, actually texted me last night, said he's in town. I wanted to know if he could come worship with us. And I thought, I don't know. No, so I said he'd come. Uh, give him a hand. I want him to just say hello to you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Wait, on. I don't know. Let's see, man. Okay. Did he tell you to operate this thing? There you go. Hey, I just want to do is say hello and good morning to all of you. I love your pastor, Pastor Ron and Pastor Eva. They are so good friends, and I just love to hang out with, with them. And uh, I love to hang out with you all. You know, God is amazing, God. Amen? Yes. I just want to say, you know, what a blessing you all have been to us and the people we serve. You know, we, we do missions around the world right now. My wife, Lisa, is in Italy. Uh, she, she, she grew up there in Italy, and, and uh, her parents started churches there and did a lot of ministry there. So that's where she's right now with her team. Uh, ministering in different cities in Italy, but I'm here with my with my son, and uh, you know we just we just hanging out together, amen. Yeah. Uh, you know, know, last year y'all helped us to buy a vehicle for our ministry in India. You know, we have a very large work in India. We have 523 churches there, and we have 470 full-time missionaries working with our ministry. And right now, we are preparing to reach 15,000 children. Oh, that's awesome. That's a lot of children, right? So it's a great opportunity we have right in front of our city. So we are using the vehicles to, to go from the mountains of Mount Everest, as the tallest mountain in the world, all the way to all the valleys and close to the oceans. And your vehicle is going all across the country, crisscrossing the country, leading people to Lord Jesus Christ. Now we are praying that God will help us to do more to reach mm -hmm. our people. Amen. Amen. You know, we have a billion people there, and you know, they need to hear the gospel. It's such an opportunity, you know, for all of us, for all of you to be a part of this great church that is not only making an impact in our community here, but it is making an impact around the world. Yeah. You are making an impact around the world. Your influence is growing. Amen? Amen. So we just want to say thank you for praying. Thank you for giving towards mission. Thank you for being faithful in this house. And I know as you do so, the Lord is going to bless you. He's going to bless your family, your children. Amen? And as you do this, our whole world will know the love of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, man. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, and I tell you what, you guys are so generous, and I'm thankful that we're able to help Guinea and uh, Lisa with Harvest Now and other missions as well, uh, but help them. And we have another opportunity coming up. Stay tuned for that. It's going to be posted. Uh, we've got a list of things we're looking at to do to help them out uh, again, so uh, uh, be paying attention to that. Also, we got a situation coming up with uh, Family Promise, where the Light Community Fellowship is going to be able to house homeless families four times a year and be a blessing to them. So uh, pay, be looking forward to that coming up as well. But give God a hand for all that he's doing. <laughs> Amen. Father, we thank you so much for your word today. And we just ask you, Father, just to, Father, bring a revelation to our heart. Father, help us to, to be in sync and walk in sync with you, Father, in everything that we do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Look over at Acts chapter 18. I'm going to continue the series. We'll finish it up next week in sync, talking about being in sync or in step with God and uh, how we can hear from God, talk with God, and walk with God. And let me say this. We cannot hear from God, talk with God, and walk with God without the help of the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit, and Jesus promised that the Father would send the Holy Spirit. He said, I have to go. I'm going to go to the Father, and he'll send the Holy Spirit. It's to your advantage, and he promised it to all of us. So we're going to look at that this morning, and when we look at Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit, we see that they were in sync. They, everything Jesus said, he said, I hear from the Father, the Holy Spirit was there. He said, he's, the Holy Spirit, he said, he's been with you, he's going to be in you. So they were in sync, and in order for us to be in sync with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we need the Holy Spirit as well, and it was a promise to all believers. Look at somebody and say, all. 
So it's to all believers. And you know, the thing about it is, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit today. And, and when you say Holy Spirit, or especially if you say Holy Ghost, some, it, it may raise different emotions in you when you say that, because some people, that, you know, maybe you're uncomfortable with that, or maybe you're not, but because maybe you've had some experience. But can I tell you this? We as a church ought to be very comfortable with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Because he is alive and well. And listen, there's been misuse, misunderstanding in the church. I believe that there's flesh that gets involved and causes creation, uh, confusion, and things to be out of order. But we need to understand the Holy Spirit. And let me just tell you a little bit history here about myself. I didn't grow up in church. You know, I grew up with some neighbors that went to church, and I would go with them. And as a matter of fact, when I grew up, I thought uh, we were Baptists. And it wasn't because we went to a Baptist church. But you know, when you went to the hospital, and I don't think they do this anymore, but they ask you for your religious or your church affiliation. And you used to have to put it on the form. So we would put Baptist, so I knew that I was Baptist because of the forms at the hospital. Come on, <laughs> you know? But you know what? I was, I'm thankful for the opportunities that when I did go to church and I look back and see how it shaped me and, and God had an impact on my life through those events, I would have neighbors that would invite me to church as a young boy. Let me tell you, you, you never realize the impact you will have on someone by inviting them to church. But I mean, I went to Pentecostal church, Baptist church, Presbyterian church, Catholic church. So I, I kind of experienced all those different denominations. When I met Ava, she didn't. She was always in a Methodist church, and that's all she knew. But as we got married and started reading the Bible and, and, and understanding God's Word, we were reading about the Holy Spirit. We were talking about it. And listen, what curiosity started rising up in us about the Holy Spirit. How I many of you have been there? And so we were like, man, I, I want to know more about this Holy Spirit. And when you talk to people about it, they're like, well, no, that's passed away. That was for the early church. Those gifts, those are not for us anymore. And you talk to somebody else and they have a total different opinion. But can I tell you, as I read the word, I, I heard what the Holy Spirit said to me through his word. And the Holy Spirit is alive and well. And the gifts are for the church today. Come on, give him praise for that. So the thing is that we have to be open to it. And, and I've seen both ends of the spectrum. And I think that you can go to one end of the spectrum, the flesh can get involved and it can create some confusion. But I think you can do the same thing when you totally ignore the Holy Spirit. So we have to embrace the Holy Spirit and, and acknowledge it. And, and Paul says this to the church. He says, I don't want you to be ignorant or unknowing about the gifts of the Spirit or the Holy Spirit. He says, I don't want you to be ignorant about them. I want you to be understanding. And that word where he says, I don't want you to be ignorant or unknowing, it means I don't want you to not know. I don't want you to be wrong. And I don't want you to err by mistake. So he comes and he brings some teaching and some correction uh, and eliminates some confusion to the church and helps the, the stay in sync. The Holy Spirit helps us to stay in sync with him and with uh, God and Jesus. So look over to Acts 18. And we're going to look at this here where a man comes into a group of believers. They had heard the teaching about uh, baptism unto repentance. And then Paul comes in later and he asks them a question. But let's look at it here in Acts 18, beginning in verse 24, it says this. Now a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures. So he knew the, the uh, he, he was a, a well-spoken man. He knew the scriptures. And it says, he came to Ephesus. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord. And being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord, though he knew only the baptism of John. So he began to speak boldly in the synagogue when Aquila and Priscilla, this husband and wife team, heard him. They took him aside and explained to him the way of God. Listen to what it says, more accurately. They didn't correct him in the things that he taught. They just gave him some more information is what it looks like. So my first point is this. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Who. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I know who. It's just the title. The Father, Son, and the Holy Who. You know, they were like, wait a minute. We've heard of the Father, the Son, Jesus, but, but the Holy Spirit, you know, maybe not so much. I think a lot of us might feel that way as well. So here we have Apollos, and we have Aquila and Priscilla, this husband and wife uh, couple. And who are they? Well, Apollos, we see he was a well-spoken man, eloquent, mighty in the Scriptures. He was able to teach the Word, and he taught accurately the things that he taught. But he only knew the baptism of John, which was repentance unto salvation, the baptism uh, to accept Jesus Christ. And so he, he was able to teach them those things. 
So he taught accurately the things that he taught. But then you see Aquila and Priscilla come along, and they, it says they, they taught him the Word of God more accurately. And who are they? We know of them in, in Acts. When you look at 1 through 4, verses 1 through 4 in Acts, we see that they were with Paul. And, and Paul had left Athens. He went to Corinth. But he was with Aquila and Priscilla, and he stayed with them. And they were tent makers, and Paul was a tent maker with them. They heard Paul teach. They heard him uh, speak of the Holy Spirit and teach about the Holy Spirit. So we could assume that they pulled Apollos aside and said, hey, have, and they maybe taught him about the Holy Spirit because he didn't teach on that when he was teaching to the people at Ephesus. So look at verse 19, I mean, Acts 19, 1, and, and it goes on here, and it says this. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. Ephesus is where Apollos was, and he taught the people about the baptism of John. So it says here that Paul came to Ephesus, Ephesus and finding some disciples, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit since you believed? Listen to what he said. Now, why would he ask such a question? Did you receive the Holy Spirit since you believe? Because I know that when I believe and I accept Jesus Christ, I have the Spirit of God living inside of me. Amen? But, you know, I have God's Spirit living inside of me, but have I heard and have I embraced and have I received the Holy Spirit? Think about it. When you receive salvation, what do you do? You hear about Jesus. You hear the gospel message and you believe it and you accept it in your heart and you embrace the fact that you're saved through Jesus Christ. Amen? But, but when we hear the Holy Spirit, how do we receive that? We believe what we hear, we receive it, and we embrace the Holy Spirit and the gifts that come with the Holy Spirit. So he asked them this question, have you received? And then listen to what they said in verse 2. So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. So Paulus came and he taught them accurately about salvation and, and, and the baptism that John had taught. But he said, they said that we haven't heard about the Holy Spirit and he said to them, into what then have you been baptized? So they said, unto, unto John's baptism. This is what Apollos taught them. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. So here Paul comes in and says, hey, have y'all, uh, okay, man, I'm glad you, you know the Lord and you've been baptized, but have you heard about the Holy Spirit? And they're like, we hadn't even heard that there was a Holy Spirit. So he explains it to them, lays hands, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now keep in mind, the Holy Spirit had already come, had already been given to the church. And the similar thing happened in Acts 8, 14, where it says this. Now, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who, when they had come to them, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them, they had only been baptized in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus. So have you received the Holy Spirit is the question that Paul has asked. You know, you've embraced Jesus Christ, but that there's something that's to your advantage. It was important enough for Paul to ask. Come on. If it was important enough for Paul to ask, it's important enough for us to ask. Have you received or heard about the, the Holy Spirit, the advantage that comes with the Holy Spirit? It's an advantage. It's a promise for you, for all believers. So have you heard about the Holy Spirit? And the point number two is this, the promise of the Holy Spirit. It's a promise to all of us. Jesus prepares his disciples for his departure. He pr promises that he will not leave them orphans and promises that the Father will send another helper. And it's to your advantage. And I think about this, you know, with Jesus being there, can you imagine how wonderful it would be to be with Jesus and hear his teachings and, teachings and learn from him? Amen? And then he's about to go, and they're like, oh, wait, you can't leave us alone. We're going to be alone. He goes, no, wait a minute. I'm going to go, but I'm going to go to the Father, and he's going to send you another helper, and it's to your advantage. And the thing about that is, if, as long as you're around Jesus and hearing his, hearing his teachings, that's wonderful. People would come from all over to hear his teachings. But think about this. It's to your advantage. It's to the church's advantage, because when Jesus goes, we don't just have to be around Jesus and his physical presence. We can have the Holy Spirit in all of us anywhere we go to help us and be an advantage. Amen. If you believe that, give him praise. And it says this about believers receiving the Holy Spirit in John 7, verse 37. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the Scriptures has said, out of his heart 
will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing, look at somebody and say, are you believing? Those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit has, uh, was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. So it's the Holy Spirit. And he says, look, you've seen and heard of him. If you've been around me, you've seen the Father. Remember, they said, wait a minute, we hadn't seen the Father. That He says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Amen. And you know what? If you've seen him, you've seen the Holy Spirit because they're one. They're one, and he's going, and the Holy Spirit's going to come to the church and be with all of us. And he says about that, he says this in John 14, beginning in 15. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. And down in verse 25, it goes on, these things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send, will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. What an awesome thing we have available to us, uh, uh, the person of the Holy Spirit, the Helper, an advantage, someone that can bring things to our remembrance and, 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 and be alongside us. As a matter of fact, the word Helper there is from the word parakletos, para, meaning parallel, right beside us, kletos, attached. And it means this called to your side to aid, to assist. Aren't you glad you've got the Holy Spirit available for, to be right by your side everywhere you go? Come on, everywhere you go. I need more people to be excited about that. Come on. All right. <clears throat> Teach you and cause you to remember Jesus' teachings. Jesus said he wasn't leaving, and it's to your advantage that, that this happens to us. And so we have an advantage uh, of the Holy Spirit to help us and lead us. And he told them, it was so important that, look, I want you to wait, he told them, to wait on the Holy Spirit. And wait on this promise. Acts 1, verse 4. Being assembled together with him, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise. Are y'all getting this, that this is a promise to us? That he said, wait for this promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. When you think about a baptism... It's total immersion. It's, it's just being surrounded by water in water baptism. When we're baptized with the Holy Spirit, we're totally embraced and surrounded by the Holy Spirit. What an awesome picture that is of being baptized in the Holy Spirit, having his presence completely surrounding us. And it was so important that he felt they, they needed to wait. Don't, look, I've got a great mission for you. I've got, got a great assignment, but I don't want you to go until you receive the Holy Spirit. Because you have an advantage. Without the Holy Spirit, you don't have that advantage. Without the Holy Spirit, you don't have that help. And I think of it this way. Me being a retired firefighter, I remember when we would pull up to a fire and we would have the water coming from the fire hydrant through the truck, through the pumps, through the hose to where you're at at the front door. If the house is on fire and the hose has no water in it, you know what I do? I wait. Come on. <laughs> You know why? Because it's not wise to go into that environment without the help of the water. Come on, are you with me? And he's saying, look, this is so important, guys. I want you to wait for this Holy Spirit, this power, this presence that's going to come, and he's going to help you go into the situations that I'm going to call you into. Somebody give God praise for that. that. That's how important it is. And he wanted them to wait. So in Acts 2, it says this. They were waiting. And it says in Acts 2, verse 1, when the day of Pentecost, as a matter of fact, Pentecost means 50, 49 days after the Passover celebration, or the 50th day was the day of Pentecost. That was the Passover celebration when Jesus was crucified, he rose from the dead. Easter, 50 days after Easter. Do y'all know what today is? Today is 50 days after Easter, the day of Pentecost. Somebody give God praise. <laughs> So he says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now we see this here. This is the initial uh, entrance of the Holy Spirit. You never see again where it came in that way with the tongues of fire, the rushing mighty wind, but this was the initial entrance of the Holy Spirit into the church on that day. And those around heard what was happening as this was going on, and they asked questions, and Peter in Acts 2.32, it says this. It says, this Jesus God has raised up, 
and of which we were all witnesses. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. It was, they waited on it, but can I tell you, the promise is already here now. And so they were saying, well, what do we do? If, if this is the case, what do we need to do? And so he gives them instruction. Now remember, this is the same guy that was running and saying, oh, I didn't know Jesus. Come on. Now he's standing up in front of any, everybody with this boldness. And he says this in Acts 2.38 when they're wondering, man, what do we need to do now? And Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission or the taking away of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise. Listen to this. The promise is to you, talking to them right there, the early church, right? It's to you guys, the, the disciples, it's to you. And to all, uh, to your children, and to all who are far off, and as many as the Lord God may call. All of you right here, come on, the promise is to all of us. We're those that are far off. God didn't say, look, I'm going to promise this to this, these few. I'm going to give them an advantage that you're not going to have. Somebody say, thank God he gave us the same advantage that he gives the early church. We have that same advantage. And it's a promise. He's not a respecter of person. It's not for the, just a chosen few. It's for all that believe in him that we have access to the, the Holy Spirit. Number three is this. Gifts of the Spirit, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, has, there's an advantage to the Holy Spirit. There's gifts that come with the Holy Spirit. When we receive the Holy Spirit, we receive power to be witnesses. Witnesses with these gifts. The early church spread exponentially because of the, the power that they received from these gifts. Uh, you know, uh, I mentioned earlier that um, last night our electricity went off at the house. And so last night about 9 o'clock, we're at the house and um, Ava's cooking some spaghetti for today, spaghetti luncheon today after the service. And she's cooking in there about 9 o'clock. She had some stuff going. And she says to me, hey, do you want to watch some TV? And I said, yeah. She goes, do you want to watch the uh, royal wedding? Yes. And I said, yes. <laughs> Not because I wanted to, but because I'm smart. <laughs> so, so I said, yeah, I, I do. I want to watch the royal wedding with you. So we sit down and we start watching the royal wedding, you know, and how they met. And it was a documentary thing about it. And they had some of the stuff from the, the actual wedding yesterday. And so we're watching it. And as, as we're watching it, we just get into it. And the electricity in the house goes out and everything turns black. And my first thought was, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but, see, Ava's not over. I can tell y'all. Thank you, Jesus. You know? <laughs> so, so, you know, and so then I had to think, okay, we called the power company. They said, they said it may be on by 11. By the way, it didn't come on until 1.30 in the morning. And I had already set up the generator, had some lights in the house, plugged in the freezer and refrigerator and all that. And then at 1.30 in the morning, the whole house turns on. I'm like, whoa, hey, what's going on? You know? 1.30 in the morning. But, you know, as I was setting up this stuff and it was dark and... I was just kind of thinking about the blessing that we have with electricity. You know, you think back in the day when they didn't have electricity and they had candles. And of course, I wasn't there. I'm just imagining what it would be like. But I was thinking about that as we were getting it set up. I had some flashlights around. And you walk into a room at night and it's, it's just kind of dark, you know, dimly lit. And I think, man, this is how people used to live. And we got the blessing of a refrigerator with ice cold stuff in it. And they didn't have all that. And I'm thinking, man, I would not want to live back before there was electricity. And now we've got, man, the LEDs, the houses are lit up, our neighbors can see us from blocks away. We got, you know, all these, these nice things with electricity. I'm thinking, I'm so glad I have the advantage of the power of electricity. Come on. Come on. And you know, why would I say to myself, you know what, I don't really like this electricity. I'm just going to live by a candle. You know what? I don't want to say, you know what? I really don't want the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm just going to live in dark. Come on, somebody. Come on. No, I, I, want, I want to have the Holy Spirit and have the advantage of being able to hear from God and talk with God and walk with God and all the benefits that come along with the Holy Spirit. So he says, wait on the Holy Spirit. Acts 1.8 says, but you shall receive power 
when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This power is from the word dunamis or dynamis. You think of dynamite. or It's an ability, it means. It gives us an ability, resource, power. It literally means power to perform miracles. You know, and here's another thing. It's not something we've earned. It's a gift. It's the gift of the Holy Spirit. I don't have to wait till I'm at a status or the right level of, of spirituality. Listen, if I can accept Christ, I can receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit just the same. And the Bible talks about different gifts of the Spirit, and we don't have time to go into all of them, but in, in 1 Corinthians 12 it, 12, it talks about the gifts of the Spirit, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, prophecy. You know how awesome it is to have the, the ability to have the Holy Spirit give us wisdom of things we didn't know about and help us to have a knowledge of things we didn't know about. You know, I was thinking just this, this week about just the times that God put something in my spirit that he either directed me in a way or prompted me to call someone or, or let me know I was going to encounter someone. Just this week, I'm so thankful for the gifts of the Spirit. And it talks about the gift of faith. And we see this where Peter and John say to the man at the gate that was lame, silver and gold I do not have, but that which I do have. They had the gift of faith to pray for him and the healing and miracles to see him rise and walk. You see, this is the thing, that this power to go out and be witnesses. And here's the thing. We come into the church, and we understand, and we learn. Paul says, I don't want you to be unknowing. As a pastor, I'll say to you, I don't want us to be unknowing about the gifts of the Spirit. But we hear and we learn these things, and we're able to go out and be witnesses to Him wherever we are. Amen? So, and then different kinds of tongues it talks about. There's prayer uh, uh, language. There's uh, ev evangelistic opportunities. There's uh, different languages that they heard them speak in their own language at Pentecost. I'm thankful for the ability that when I don't know what to pray, I can pray to the Father. The Holy Spirit prays in a way that, that I don't understand, but I know that God's hearing and understanding me. Amen? interpretation of tongues because it, it, there has to be edification. I believe, again, there's evangelistic opportunities for that. And, and, and then we can pray in the Spirit when we don't know how to pray. We need to embrace all the gifts of the Spirit. Now, I want to show you here in Acts 4 the gifts of the Spirit at work in the body of Christ and what that looks like. Acts 4, 29, it says this. You know, uh, John and Peter had prayed for the man to be healed at the gate, and then they got thrown in jail, and they were telling them, don't you talk about Jesus anymore? And they're like, man, we're going to obey God rather than you. And, but they pray for the church here in Acts 4, 29, and it says this, Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness that we may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak. They spoke the Word of God with boldness. Can I tell you, I, I pray this before I, I preach in front of people. Lord, give me boldness. Give me clarity to speak your Word. Whenever I, I, I encounter somebody that asks me questions about the Lord, Lord, give me boldness. I'm thankful that even when I don't know what to say, the Holy Spirit can fill my mouth with things to say. Amen? Power and boldness. The word boldness there, it means confidence and freedom without confusion. In other words, the Holy Spirit can give us confidence to speak and be bold and to bring clarity and make sense of things. I'm thankful for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Peter went from being uh, afraid and denying Christ to speaking boldly about him. And when he was commanded not to speak of Christ, he did it anyway, obeying God. It says, that these, and he prayed for signs and wonders to be witnesses. You know that signs and wonders, it says, is a witness to the unbeliever, to unbelievers. And, and uh, he was told not to teach these things anymore. And Acts 5, 32 says this, and when we, we are his witnesses in these things, and so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. Thank God he gives it to all those that obey him. So the Holy Spirit's an advantage, a helper and, and through these gifts that we see in Scripture. Number four, talking about the, how the uh, gifts look in the body of Christ, order in the church. You know, the early church got weird and out of order. Can I tell you, let me say this. The Holy Spirit is not weird. People are weird. <laughs> Amen. The Holy Spirit is not weird, not goofy, but people can get in the flesh and get weird and goofy and create some confusion about the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is, we're to come and to learn and be equipped and go out and be witnesses. And, and let me say this, not to come into a building and, and experience things and then go out and live like the world. We're to come in and be equipped and go out and be witnesses for Him uh, through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Are y'all with me? Come on. 
So Paul here, he's, he brings correction to the church concerning the gifts when he says, I don't want you to be unknowing or ignorant. He brings correction. He says, look, I want you to earnestly desire the gifts, desire the best gifts. Do not forbid to use the gifts. Speak in tongues, but I want you to desire the best gifts. And he's talking about being in order. You know, I, I've had people say to me, you know, well, if, if we have, if we believe in these gifts, why do we not hear that in the church? I think that we do, but we don't realize it. Let me say this too, you know, Paul brings a clarity to the fact that they were coming in, they were speaking in tongues, they didn't understand that what they were saying, so he says somebody needs to interpret that. But he said this, was not, this is not the, the norm, this was the default. He says you need to speak where people understand you when you speak in the body of Christ. So he brings correction here in the church to be edified, not having confusion, and wants you to desire the gifts of the church. 1 Corinthians 14, he talks about pursuing love and desiring gifts. Earnestly desire the gifts that you may edify one another. And he says this, I wish you all spoke in tongues. And I'll say this too, you know, when I come to church and I'm worshiping, I'm speaking in tongues, I'm praying in the spirit to God. But when I get up here, I'm prophesying and speaking to you where you understand. And I would encourage all of you to do the same. Uh, Jude 120 says, praying in the spirit, building up your most holy faith. Prophecy, speaking out is greater than the tongues. And he says this, forbid not to speak in tongues. Listen to this in Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for but we, as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. You know what that is? That's being in sync with the Lord. 1 Corinthians 14, 18, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than all of you, but yet in the church I would rather that you speak five words with my understanding than I, that I may teach others also than 10,000 words in tongues. Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. So let me, let me talk about this, talk about order in the church. I love vibrant, exciting atmosphere in church. Come on, I love it. I love when people say amen when I'm preaching. All right, I love it when people say amen when I'm preaching, encouraging me, right? I love it when we worship and we can get excited about the Lord. And you know, there's something that you can feel in the spirit when we're excited about the Lord. But you know, you can also be out of order sometimes. And there was a lady here one time and uh, she was, she would yell and as during worship and she would do it at, at different times where it wasn't in sync. And there was something in my spirit, everybody say discerning of spirits. And I sensed something wasn't right. And after a few weeks of this, someone, we approached her, had somebody go just talk to her and said, you know what, it's just a little out of order there. And here's what she said. She goes, well, I knew this was coming. And let me tell you this, if you know something's coming, then it's out of order. But can I tell you, God wants the church to be free to worship. Come on, the Holy Spirit to be free to worship and praise Him and be excited about the Lord, uh, but be in unity and in sync. The last point is this, receive the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to have the worship team come up. We're going to get ready to close. We're talking about being in sync. Receive the Holy Spirit. So Jesus told the disciples when he was on the road to Emmaus, he said, go and wait in, in Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit. And he told the disciples, wait for the promise. It, it was that important. But can I tell you this? This is exciting. There's no more waiting. There's no more waiting for the Holy Spirit. He's here. All we have to do is receive the Holy Spirit and embrace the gifts of the Spirit. In Acts 2, 38, Peter said to repent and receive salvation, repent, so, and then be baptized. And can I tell you the order of this? If we know the Lord, you can receive the Holy Spirit. When they, he went to Ephesus, Paul says, have you heard about it? They said, we hadn't even heard that there was a Holy Spirit. But you can receive the Holy Spirit at any time if you believe in Christ. Would you stand with me?